Well, we have a very special guest joining us on the show today in celebration of our Easter weekend. And yeah, happy Easter, everybody, by the way. Yes, happy Easter, everybody. Uh, and I, I have it ready here. Diane, F wait, hang on a sec. Diane Foster is here joining us. Her film, which is called Easter Bloody Easter. <laughs> Easter Bloody Easter. I knew it was Easter Bloody Easter. I was waiting for Alan to put up the banner. Well, I was Easter moving the Easter. boxes around trying to get the. Yeah. Um, I had it up Easter early. Bloody Easter. Diane, congratulations on the film. It, and we just talked about the uh, Pooh Blood and Honey Part 2, which is, it did so well at the box office. They already announced Part 3 and all this. I I actually personally like holiday horror-themed movies. This immediately got my attention. Tell us what led to Easter Bloody Easter. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's so nice to meet you guys and, and be here today. Um, you know, there was a series of events that led to Easter Bloody Easter. Um, Allison, who wrote the film, and Kelly, who's in the film with me, uh, who plays Carol, we had done a play together um, in Beverly Hills, and then we took that play to San Francisco, and we really loved working together. And then the pandemic hit, and we were like, well, we can't do live theater. And because my background is in film, and I did a lot of um, producing over the years, I said, let's make a film. So Allison said, okay, we know we like the characters. We like it taking place in Texas, that kind of thing. And then she came back to us a couple weeks later and was like, I wrote a film and it has demon bunnies and a giant jackalope and it takes place at Easter. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do this. Um, so that's really how it came to be. And once we got into it, we were just like full pistons going from the, from the moment we did it. Well, the trailer is on the Film Threat uh, Trailers channel, so check that out. But we've got the poster up here. I love this poster. Hoppy Hunting is the tagline. Uh, I think I think it's hilarious. And uh, then you've got some uh, just uh, that's a I, that's a poster. That's I'm immediately interested. Now, in terms of like, how do you take which is a beloved children's holiday involving candy and hunting eggs? How do you turn that into a horror film? You know, I think that's what's so great about it is I love the juxtaposition between something really nice and furry and fuzzy like a little bunny and turning it into <laughs> a demon. And I think that's what makes it so great together is that you have this, this kindness and then the chaos. And that to me is something I really wanted to explore. The idea of having everybody in their Easter best and pastels and then just covered in blood. I was like, I am so there for that. And I knew genre fans would want that too, because we don't really have a lot of Easter themed films. And we knew that we were really on our own lane with that. There aren't a lot of comedy horrors with it. So we just thought, why the heck not? Let's let's pour some blood on, on pastels and, and uh, get some demon bunnies in here. Heck yeah. And uh, post your comments and questions here uh, 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 so that we can, uh, we'll get right into it. So Diane, like in terms of like the makeup effects, can you tell us about like uh, how you approach the makeup effects? Were there budget challenges? How did you do? I assume uh, based on the trailer, uh, there's some gore. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And um, we definitely had budget limitations. I mean, we're an independent film, um, but I always wanted to do practical effects and in-camera effects. You know, I come from that world of watching that kind of stuff growing up. I love slashers. So I always wanted to do it in camera, not do it after the fact. Um, so we had incredible people, Alexandra Baelish, Ashley Stansberry, uh, Lydia Morales. We had an incredible female team actually doing all the special effects. And they created each one of those kills. Um, we just kept pouring blood. And it's funny because every day when we were on set, we would kind of get together and huddle prior. Like I really felt like a football coach. I was like, okay, we're going to go out there and do this today. And I just kept saying to everyone, we need more blood. And that was sort of our mantra throughout the whole film. Um, so it was really fun to do, but yeah, we did have, um, we had to sort of be creative around that because we didn't have a huge budget. And I just wanted to make sure that everything that we were seeing in camera that Really, this film was made for the fans of the genre. Um, I'm a fan of the genre, so I, I knew that audiences would love it, and I wanted to really give that to them. And uh, we've got a bunch of questions in the chat, but before we get to those, were there any 
challenges with the jackalope and as a jackalope i love the there's a bar in austin texas called the jackalope that when you enter in the lobby there is a giant jackalope that's like it's like a photo op and you can kind of get on top of the jackalope it's huge and that bar is one of my favorite bars was there anything that just made you decide not just going to be an easter bunny it's going to be a jackalope yeah, that's really cool. I've never been there actually, and people have sent me photos of it. Um, but I will definitely get there and ride that jackalope. Um, you know, <laughs> I think again, um, you know, Allison is such a quirky person um, in general, and she's a very funny person. And I think the idea really came from the idea of not just making it the Easter Bunny. Like, what else happens, and especially in Texas? And uh, you know, a jackalope is very Texas. So we thought, wow, this would be a really great opportunity to explore a giant jackalope because we we really don't see him in movies very often. And we were just done with the jackalope discrimination. You know, we were like, we need to give this guy an opportunity. <laughs> our, uh, so, our reviewer, uh, <laughs> our reviewer, Bobby Lapeer, uh reviewed the film for us. And he talked a lot about the comedy in it, that, that there's a lot of comedy. In it. And, uh, and you know, what, what was kind of the background, you know, what is Allison's background and what was her sensibility in bringing in the comedy into the story? Yeah, we always wanted to make a comedy. I mean, again, I think when you're talking about demon bunnies and giant jackalopes, you know, you're going to lend itself to comedy. And this film does not take itself seriously. This film knows exactly what it is. Um, it's very self-aware. And I think that's what makes it funny. Um, so, you know, we had done a lot of work together in comedy prior, um, just doing, you know, different projects together. And again, she just has like that very quirky personality. Um, and we really wanted to make something that was campy and fun and that people could just go away for an hour and a half and have a really good time over, you know, every single spring, like, you know, watch it with your families and um, just have a really good time. So that's really where that inspiration came from. And, you know, working with everybody and creating this was such a joy. And the other thing I wanted to say about the Jackalope was when we were when we were figuring that out, he had to be um, a physical actor. So Jamie Klein, who plays him in the movie, he plays the physical uh, Jackalope. And then Miles Cooper does the voice of the character. So we needed to make sure we had somebody who could run, jump, hop, um, that kind of stuff with this really, you know, heavy outfit on. And when he's in that, I mean, he's almost eight feet tall. So it's, it's pretty crazy that, you know, he, he had to do that. We also shot it in the summer in Los Angeles and it was hot as hell. So, you know, wow. we kept ice packs for him and we kept, you know, it was sort of like that Mickey Mouse thing where we had to give him 20 minutes on and then like, okay, Mickey's got to go back and take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we've got um god we've got over 600 people watching us live on youtube a couple hundred more on rumble shout out to our rumble folks post your questions and comments here and um our chat has questions for you awesome hi everybody so let's, let's go <laughs> um first question here from solomon thornton says greetings madam diane any oh, advice for beginning filmmakers oh i love that yes um you know what make your film. If you have a, um, a dream that you want to do this, just do it. Don't allow anybody else to stand in your way. You're going to hear no a lot. Keep going. If you believe in it, then that's all that matters. You just have to, you have to find the team that's going to be willing to go there with you and just keep going, keep going. Don't let anything get in your way. And shout out to Solomon. He, he generally asks the same question every time. It's a great question, and it's really important because our audience, uh, there's, there's a bunch of people in our audience that are aspiring filmmakers, and I tell them, you know, the difference, the only difference between you and someone who's made a film is the person who made a film just decided to do it and to Heck put yeah. all their efforts into it. And I, I, you know, when I become obsessive about a project, I'll even get like a mug made with the name of the project. So every day when I look at my coffee, I'm like, I got to work on that thing. Oh, That's my I weird... It's a weird advice. It's like a um, like a positive affirmation, like a post-it note that says something positive. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but the fact of the matter is, is that's really what it is. It's about the belief in yourself and actually just staying with it and going for it. Because if you never do it, you know, never up, never in. So yes. you, got, you got to just go for it. Yeah, and then and then yeah, it's like that constant reminder in a positive mm -hmm. way. So yeah. here we go. Uh, Benjamin for nine 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 asks. 
is Easter Bloody Easter anti-Christian or just a parody of egg hunting? Yeah, we are definitely not anti-Christian. We um, there's no you know big um, things in the film that are we're not making any statements. This is um, a film that we just want people to have a good time with. I think the Easter holiday is something that a lot of people do, um, whether or not you're religious or not. You know, you're going to find yourself maybe at an egg hunt or you're going to get together with family. So. We want you to be able to watch something with all those people when you do it. So um, enjoy it. It's it's a really great time. And and again, we're not we're not making any statements. We just uh, other than the you know those those housewife uh, church ladies. We we all know those those ladies out there. <laughs> the movie just seems like it's more making fun of the holiday as it's been commercialized. You know what Definitely. I mean? Um, mm -hmm. There are no chocolate eggs or bunnies in the Bible uh, that I can recall. <laughs> So from Rumble, um, Caveat Ties supporter question, how did you go about gathering people for building set and creating effects and such? So how do you put together that team? Mm, I love that um, because it's so important. You know, every film is a team effort. It, it's like a, playing a sport. You know, you cannot do it alone. Um, you really do know, need those people. And um, we we really searched high and low while we were in the process. There was about a year while we were meeting people, talking to everyone who wanted to be a part of the film based on the script. Um, we had incredible set designers. I will say that 95% of my crew was female, which we just received the reframe uh, re stamp, excuse me, from women in film. And that means a lot because we don't have enough female filmmakers and we don't have enough females in leadership positions. So um, we had uh, we had females in those positions. Um, Haley Coleman Poggy was uh, one of our set designers and Wa Depp. She was incredible just creating the life of Wahlberg. And I wanted to really make sure that the audience felt like they were in this town with these people, that we weren't just with our lead characters, that we were getting to know the townspeople as well. Um, and they really did such a great job creating Texas here. That's great. Um, it really is about like, and look, as far as I'm concerned, uh, get all the advantages you possibly can. I don't care whether it's tax breaks or whatever, take Absolutely. them. And from the film threat review I was showing, actually, we will link the uh, review in the description of this video. But um, this is a quote from the review by Bobby Lapierre says, in the pantheon of Easter horror films, this is a good one to rewatch every spring. <laughs> Easter bloody Easter finds the proper groove to become a camp classic. <laughs> but, and Bobby, by the way, when we get a lot, he reviews a lot of horror. Mm -hmm. So to get love from Bobby, oh, I know yeah. the movies where he has, uh, he's gotten, uh, maybe he did not like, and I'll just say he's, um, a couple things got him in trouble, but when he likes something, <laughs> always gets my attention. I'm a fan of like a movie that kind of knows what it is, right? Yeah, so, totally. Um, yeah, we really appreciate that so much. And, you know, we love it. Again, we made this film for audiences that love this type of film. So, you know, we we know that we're going to find people certainly who, you know, may not like it and that's not their cup of tea. And that's okay because we know the fans who do love it and will love it and watch it every single year. So we really appreciate Thank you, Bobby, for that. That was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> More comments here um, from Brock Samsonite says, what influences your decision as an indie filmmaker to decide whether to aim for a theatrical run or shoot straight for a straight release? Interesting. Yeah, that's a really great question. I think the distribution aspect of this film was very interesting because we had a lot of companies that wanted to take the film out, especially because, again, we're sort of in our own lane. They knew this was like a very great sales uh, film that people would like it. It's a hot hot button title. So, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, this is the type of film that should live in, in, in people's televisions, their phones, their iPads, so that they can watch it over and over again. And I feel like right now we're sort of in a weird situation with movie theaters. Um, I love going to see movies at movie theaters, but I think with this type of film, we knew that it would be better on streaming and that, you know, having it in people's households was really the way to go. And I think at the end of the day, film is an exhibition art. So if you're going to get your film out there, you want to have as many eyeballs on it as possible. So I think you got to look at the type of film that you have and really um, just get clear about who is my audience and where is my audience going to watch this movie. And that's really where we decided that. That's really key. That's mm -hmm. I, I just think that's key is just you're you're making a movie for an audience. Always keep them in, in mind. Yeah. Um, 
so we've got more comments here uh, from Rumble, 8 ls 24 Was there anything you weren't able to secure for the film, be it a setting, a song, or an actor? I think when you're an indie filmmaker, you know, there's always something you want to do that you're like, well, if we had the money, we could get the rights to that Aerosmith <laughs> song. I don't know why yeah, that exactly. Yeah, you know I mean, I think... Yeah, you're right. I mean, I think we were totally aware of what we had and what we were going into it. I will say that originally some of the script Allison had written that basically the bunnies destroyed the town almost in like a World War Z type way. And I was like, Allison, like we do not have that budget to have like Steven Spielberg airplane in the middle of Wahlberg. So right. as a fun as that would have been and to have, you know, see maybe houses destroyed and that kind of stuff, we really had to just very get very clear about what our budget level was, um, you know, and do the most that we could and have the creative conversations about, well, how can we make this something that's really special and that fans are going to love? Um, but we don't, you know, we're not going to put an airplane in the middle of, um, of Wahlberg, Texas, you know, <laughs> you're, you're getting a lot of love in the chat. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to be super specific. <laughs> Benjamin Thank for you. 999 says, can you return regularly so you can add some femininity to film threat? This episode rules. I love that. Yes. I will come back anytime you guys. We'll make more movies. Make a lot more movies. Make more. Yeah. Yes. What other holidays are there? <laughs> and then um, uh, another super chat here from Matthew Hammond for 499. How did, how did you make the transition from in front of the camera to behind the camera? What misconception did you have of people behind the camera? For Matthew Hammond, oh, great question. That is so awesome. You know, I think that, um, you know, I started out as an actor. I did a lot of musical theater growing up and then I got to film and I actually was producing film like very right away. My first film ever that I produced was called Iowa. It had Rosanna Arquette in it. We went to Tribeca Film Festival. I started wow. it and produced it. And yeah, that kind of got it going to get me running on the producing aspect of it. And I really love producing. I am it fits my personality. I love putting teams of people together. I love watching people shine and do, you know, do their stories and tell their stories. So um, I think this was very interesting because it was the first time for me that I was really ready to get into the director's seat. Having all that years of experience producing, I really watched directors and what they went through. And um, I just felt that I was ready to do it. And this was a story that I could do that. And really, I give a lot of credit to Allison because she said to me, I want you to direct this. And that meant the world wow. to me. It gave me the self-confidence to say, I can do this. I can lead this team. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do it. So I think the only misconception that you have when you're doing this kind of thing is that, you know, that you somehow are, you know, that the director or something is, you know, uh, secondary from the cast and crew or whatever. And that's so not true. I think the best kind of films are made when the director is a part of the team and realizes how much they need their team. And um, they listen to their team. I'm a very collaborative director, so I want to hear what my cinematographer has to say. I want to hear what my editor has to say. And they're willing to go there with me and say, can we try this? And, you know, does this work? Maybe it doesn't, but let's just try it and see what happens. And I think the best um, films are made from that collaborative space. Nice. We, we still have the chat is just on fire. Uh, Brock Samsonite asks, also, is there any chance for a crossover into the Puna Punaverse? Uh, we heard about the other week, maybe the Avenger style horror throwdown. This is a group of filmmakers from the UK that are doing a lot of the Winnie the Pooh and Disney characters. Now that they've come into the public domain, they're doing wow. horror films. Um, I guess you could talk to them. They're, they're actually in LA at screenings around Los Angeles right now. They're oh, actually wow. doing appearances and Q&As. You should go meet oh. them. I would love to meet them. Yeah, tell me how to do that. <laughs> I'm happy um, to. Just, yeah, just look up the Winnie the Pooh. Uh, Winnie the it's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey two. Yeah. Okay. Check it out. They were at um, Universal City Walk. So yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, and people are asking. Chad Man asks, where can I watch this in the UK? And then All Twisted Up says theatrical release, streaming, VOD. How can people see the film? 
Yes, absolutely. So um, it's streaming on every uh, VOD platform. So you can watch it on YouTube movies, Google Play, Microsoft, um, Vudu, uh, what else? Uh, iTunes, Apple TV, um, Amazon Prime. So uh, we do have a partnership with a company in the UK called The Movie Partnership, and they're putting our movie out there as well. So just check them out. We're also in Latin America um, right now, and we plan on going all over the world. So definitely check us out. I mean, with the streaming, especially, it really helps for you guys to watch it. Please rate it, you know, send us a review. We love hearing from you. Um, and, and we definitely want to hear about, you know, how you enjoy it. And um, it means a lot to, to us as indie filmmakers, for sure. So it's VOD on Apple TV, Amazon, YouTube, Voodoo, all the things. And then yeah. uh, my understanding is that you sing a song from the soundtrack honey bunny kind of like santa baby and it's on spotify is that true yeah it's on spotify and apple music and anywhere that you listen to music it's called honey bunny and uh, <laughs> we, we also have a music video for it so check out wally bird productions youtube because you can see the the music video it's very a la marilyn um and i wanted to create a santa baby for easter and um so honey bunny is my contribution <laughs> And then uh, a comment here, Bush and Ryu Cat says, Diane, are you seriously trying to scare the soul out of me with that poster? Seriously, best of luck. Oh, uh, thank you from, so much. And from Rumble, were there any challenges shooting in and around LA while setting the film in Texas? Mm, I love that. Um, yes, a, a little bit. We did decide that we were going to shoot in the Sun Valley area. We shot on a private ranch there. Um, and in that area in LA, there aren't a lot of like palm trees um, and that sort of LA look. So we needed it to look very ranch style. We were lucky to get this private ranch. Um, they were very kind to have us. Um, but we just, um, we really made sure that, you know, we brought in the materials that looked at all the hay. That was like stuff that we brought in um, <laughs> to, the, to the set. And um, it really wasn't that challenging, to be honest. There are parts of Texas that look a lot like California. So for us, that, that really, you know, lent itself to the whole story and the idea. Gotcha. And uh, I, I just got to say, congratulations. Thank you so much for appearing on the show. The timing could not be better for Easter, bloody Easter. So we appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Um, I had in the prize, someone unstarted. Your production company is at Wally Bird Productions. And then the comment that was, I had was, uh, the Instagram. Let me, uh, Oh, Instagram. Uh, yeah. Please say hi to me on Instagram. I, I respond to every DM and any comments. So, you know, please reach out to me. I love talking to you and hearing about, you know, how you felt about the film. If any filmmakers have questions, I'm always happy to talk about it, um, you know, to anyone. So please reach out and say hi. And I, I don't know how this happened, but during the interview, someone removed the banner and I don't know why. So now I just put the banner back up. Alan will have a talk. I think Alan <laughs> hit, hit something on accident, but we appreciate it. Of course Diane, it was me. It had to have been me. <laughs> it, it was probably, oh, whatever, who cares? <laughs> hey, congratulations, Diane. The timing couldn't be better. Check out Easter Bloody Easter on all the platforms. Congratulations. Please come back again. I um, have to talk about uh, your next project. And also, one final thing. You, you were a scream queen. Can you tell us a little bit about your scream queen life previous to sitting in the director's chair? Oh, you're so sweet and kind. Um, yes. So I, I did a lot of different horror films um, prior to Easter Bloody Easter. I did a film called The Orphan Killer that was banned in Germany and Australia. And I am severely tortured in that film. So oh, no. <laughs> if you'd like to see that, please check it out. Um, and then I did um, Glenn Danzig's Veronica. Uh, which was his first, uh, you know, his directorial debut. And I met Glenn doing um, the music video for Last Ride. I was the girl in his video. And Glenn and I are both from New Jersey. So, um, you know, we he's just the sweetest. I, I love working with Danzig. And um, that's sort of like where my journey started as um, a screen queen. So very bloody and kind of crazy. And um, and then I went toward the comedy aspect because that's really my personality. I'm a full blown nerd. I, you know, I, I love being goofy. So, um, you know, it, that just makes me feel good doing comedy and horror at the same time. Awesome. Well, congratulations again, uh, Diane. Thank you so much for appearing on the show today. Have a great 
holiday Easter weekend. Yes. And, uh, happy Easter, bloody Easter. <laughs> <laughs> happy and Easter, bloody guys. Easter. Yeah. And awesome. thanks for all the comments and the, and the questions. I love it. It was so awesome being here with you guys. And thanks to everybody for supporting. We really appreciate it. Awesome. And this and is a great post Easter dinner viewing. So <laughs> yes. Yes. not during dinner, but also <laughs> we have a YouTube channel, Wally Bird Productions. So look yes. up on YouTube, your YouTube channel. Diane, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.